Hello fellow YouTubers, I'm Adrian.exe. Welcome to another episode of Content Analysis, where I analyze your favorite shows, movies, and games to determine the presence of, and make inferences relating to, different scientific and philosophical concepts. In this episode, we are going to attempt to diagnose the complex mind of the menace chemist behind the crystal blue epidemic, Walter White. The answer to what would happen if your high school chemistry teacher decided he valued financial stability more than teaching. Walter White can be called many things. A chemist, a chef, no pee pizza thrower, a believer in God. Just get me home. But did he have antisocial and narcissistic personality disorder? To answer that question, we must first turn to the Bible of modern day psychiatry and psychology, the DSM-5, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, 5th edition. According to APA 452, a person can be diagnosed with a personality disorder or a PD by assessing impairments in personality functioning and pathological personality trait expression. As some of you may have noticed, we are using the alternative DSM-5 model for personality disorder, or the AMPD. The approach of the AMPD is different because it allows for a more thorough assessment when trying to determine if a person does or does not have a personality disorder. In short, any diagnosis using the AMPD necessitates the meeting of seven criteria for the diagnosis of a PD. Criterion A refers to the individual's level of personality functioning. Personality functioning is divided into two categories, self-functioning and interpersonal functioning. Interpersonal functioning is further divided into the categories of empathy and intimacy, while self-functioning is further divided into the categories of identity and self-direction. The level of impairment in each of these categories are measured using the Levels of Personality Functioning Scale, or the LFPS. Criterion B contains 5 personality domains and 25 personality facets or pathological personality traits. Those personality traits are arranged in the following 5 domains. Negative affectivity, detachment, antagonism, disinhibition, and psychoticism. Only some of these will apply since we will only be looking at Antisocial Personality Disorder, or APD and Narcissistic Personality Disorder, or NPD. Criterion C requires the evaluation of the pervasiveness of the personality dysfunctionality throughout different personal and social situations. Criterion D requires an assessment of the stability of the personality dysfunctionality across time, while also narrowing down the age of onset. Finally, Criterion E, F, and G necessitates the ruling out of any alternative explanations for the personality dysfunctionality. The alternative explanations of criterion E, F, and G consider the presence of another mental disorder, usage of drugs, or the presence of another medical condition, and the impact of a person's developmental stage on their behavior, respectively. Under the general criteria for a personality disorder, or GCPD, criterion A focuses on moderate or greater impairment in personality, self slash interpersonal functioning. The first area we must concentrate on is the level of impairment of Walter's identity and self-direction. First, what is an identity? An identity is who you are as a person, and the basis of that identity is based upon your memories, personality traits, beliefs, and attitudes. Your identity is formed from the significant people around you, reference groups, and the role you choose to play in society. Doubts about your identity could lead to the development of a personality disorder. This portion of Criterion A is asking, was Walter aware of who he was as a person? And was he able to separate his identity from others? Next, what is self-direction? Self-direction refers to a person's ability to take action towards achieving their goals and to self-reflect effectively. Here, Criterion A is asking, did Walter possess these abilities? It's important to mention that I'll be providing evidence for a diagnosis of Walter White at the height of his career. Next, we must focus on the level of impairment of Walter's empathy and intimacy, which looks at a person's ability to understand other people's perspectives and the ability to form close relationships, respectively. I think moderate impairment is a fair assessment all across the board for Mr. White. Moderate impairment in identity for Walt is characterized by his dependence on others for identity, seeking approval from others, and possession of an inferiority complex with an inflated self-appraisal. An inferiority complex is a basic feeling of inadequacy and insecurity deriving from actual or imagined physical or psychological deficiency. Self-appraisal is the way a person evaluates their attributes or abilities in a specific domain in life. A person's specific self-esteem could be high or low depending on their evaluation. 
Now that we got a little bit of information needed for this assessment, let's get started. As far as roles are concerned, Walt first took on the role of a researcher for Grey Matter, then as a lab technician for Sandia Labs. Later, he decided to teach high school chemistry at J.P. Wine High School. Feeling unhappy and with his death looming around the corner, he decided to break bad and obtained his first identity from Jesse. Walt then viewed himself as a meth dealer. As such, he began to manufacture meth, and once he realized he was quite the talented chef, he started to become more power hungry and tyrannical. His identity began to change after Tuco's death. Walt became more like a drug lord and even indirectly compared himself to Tuco. You think Tuco had breakage? I guess it's true he did. He broke bones. Fast forward to after Gus's death. Walter then obtained his identity from Gus and saw himself as a drug kingpin. What did Gus pay his mules? Gustavo Frank didn't use mules. He didn't need them. He spent 20 years building his own distribution. An example of his dependence can be seen when Walt asks Jesse who he is. He states he is the bad guy, which is the same statement my ex uses to describe me anytime my name is brought up. Walter later told Gus that he is not a criminal, but then later accepted his role. With regards to seeking approval, Walt sought Skyler's approval throughout the series for his actions and his choice in occupation. Walt also wanted Jesse to accept and approve of the way he operated their business, regardless of who may die. He would likely have wanted his entire family to eventually be understanding and approve of his actions, whether he continued cooking or not. After all, they were okay with him illegally gambling. All this is evidenced by his conversation with Skyler. See that watch? It's a birthday present. The person who gave me this present wanted me dead too. Not that long ago, he pointed a gun right between my eyes right here, and he threatened to kill me. He changed his mind about me, Skyler. And so will you. Concerning his deflated self-appraisal, it's clear that in life, he felt like he had failed to utilize his intellectual gifts to their fullest extent, and provide for himself and his family financially. Later, we see him inflate his self-appraisal by claiming to Gus that his product is superior to anything else currently being sold on the market. I mean, have you guys tried this? Just kidding, guys. It's candy. I can prove it. So YouTube, don't demonetize me. Wait, this is real? Oh well, guess you live and you learn. Moving on. Additionally, he later tells Jesse that he believes that they are the best at cooking meth. Walt's self-direction would be moderately dysfunctional because of his exceedingly high or low personal standards and his lack of fulfillment after achieving the goals he set. Although it isn't entirely clear whether or not Walt sets goals with gaining approval in mind, and it isn't necessary for him to do so in order for his self-direction to be considered impaired. Walt's personal standards vary from irrationally high or low. A great example can be seen in the oddly disliked episode titled Fly, where Walt absolutely refused to cook or allow Jesse to do so unless the contaminant, i.e. the fly, was eliminated. However, after Walt gave up trying to kill the fly, he changed his mind and was willing to cook regardless of the fly's presence. Walt behaved this way because he expected ideal lab conditions and wanted the chemistry to be respected. The episode demonstrates the cause of Walt's varying personal standards, which are the multiple instances in which he experiences cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance means the state of having inconsistent thoughts, beliefs, or attitudes, especially as relating to behavioral decisions and attitude change. Lastly, Walt had an impaired ability to self-reflect. He possessed the ability to reflect on past experiences, but was unable to draw inferences from them, as well as use those same inferences to construct and develop a representation of himself. For example, throughout the series, he was unable to figure out 
the actual reason he continued to cook and take on the identity of Heisenberg. At first, he states that he cooks to provide for his family, but at the end, he admitted that he did it for himself. Empathy is understanding a person from their frame of reference rather than one's own, or vicariously experiencing that person's feelings, perceptions, and thoughts. A person with a dysfunctional sense of empathy is unconcerned or unaware of the effects of their actions, are unable to understand or appreciate another person's perspective, or are excessively self-referential and are hyper-attuned to others' emotions, but only as it relates to them. Walt understood other people's feelings and perspectives, but could only do so to the extent that they involved him. Walt's conversation with Jesse regarding the poisoning of Brock exemplifies his impairment. He understood how Jesse would feel if he thought Gus poisoned him, and used that to survive his feud with Gus. Walter's conversation with Mike regarding the reasons why he, Mike, and Jesse had to pay Gus's former employees serves as another example. We are going to make them whole. What is this we? These were Gus's employees, not ours. They might have been Gus's employees, but they're my guys. So what are they doing to further our interests? It's apparent that Walt was unable to see that getting Mike's guys their money would help protect their business and was only concerned with how they furthered his interests. Walt was also unaware of the potential consequences of his actions and how they affected the people around him. Ironically, he gave Jesse a speech in which he told him that he needs to think about his actions and how they affect other people. Jesse, your actions, they affect other people. Walt's lack of foresight eventually indirectly put his family in danger, as can be seen when Todd and his group visited Skylar and Holly at their home. Walt also became increasingly desensitized to death in general throughout the series, which led him to appear unconcerned after Drew Sharp was killed. We the audience are also never made aware of any remorse Walter felt towards the thousands if not millions of people he affected with his brumette. He was very much like Richard Sackler in that regard. All these examples further substantiate the claim that Walter's empathy was impaired. Intimacy or the ability to form close relationships is the last category. Walter did have the ability to form close relationships, and had close relationships with his family. Walter expected to be understood by those closest to him, and used the relationships he had to regulate his emotions and self-esteem. Walt's conversation with Jesse about the state of Walt's relationship with Skylar serves as a primary example of his impaired intimacy. During the episode, Fly, Walt agonizes over the fact that he was unable to get Skylar to understand why he was cooking meth. Regardless of the money he had made up to that point, and how much he was still capable of making, Skylar's view of Walt damaged his self-esteem and caused him to feel depressed. Oh, if I had just lived right up to that moment, and not one second more. Walt tried hard to get her to understand because he wanted Skylar to approve of the justification he used for his actions. The justification being that he decided to get involved in the illicit drug trade to support his family financially. Ironically, she appeared to understand the reasons why he started to cook meth when she revealed Walt's gambling problem. It was more than facing death, it was knowing that he was going to leave behind nothing. And so that's how this all started. For better or worse, he wanted to provide. And so he paid his medical bills the only way he knew how. Although she does somewhat understand, she still doesn't believe that Walt is justified. From Criterion A of the GCPD, we can turn to Criterion A corresponding to NPD and APD. By doing so, we can see how the identity, self-direction, empathy, and intimacy portions of Walt's personality would function if he had NPD and APD. According to the sub-Criterion A1, for NPD, a person with this disorder would display a pervasive sense of exaggerated self-importance and appraisal. During Walt's meeting with Gus, after killing Gale, he explained to him how vital he is to the well-being of his crystal blue empire. 
without us, without Jesse and myself, you have no one to make your product. You kill me, you have nothing. This example highlights Walter's sense of self-importance. During Walt's meeting with Declan, he expected him to know who he was and then took sole credit for murdering Gus. Who the hell are you? You know. You all know exactly who I am. Say my name. You what? I don't, I don't have a damn clue who the hell you are. Yeah, you do. I'm the cook. I'm the man who killed Gus Fring. This conversation serves as another example. Additionally, you can see his sense of self-importance during his conversation with Jesse when they discuss the purpose behind Jesse's meetings with Mike. Like you said, Gus can't kill you because of me. He knows I won't stand for it. He needs me, and he hates the fact that he needs me. So what does he do? He goes to work driving a wedge between you and me. You're an asshole. If you'd been there, you'd know it wasn't a setup. Wait a minute. How long did those guys chase you, huh? Because the way you describe it, they gave up pretty damn easy. No, no, this, this whole thing, all of this, it's all about me. It's apparent that Walt believed that he influenced Gus's decisions regarding Jesse, but Walter didn't always view himself in such a high regard, which brings us to my next point. During the last two years of Walter's life, he was shown to devalue his sense of self-worth. One notable example was when he spoke to Dr. Chavez. Doctor, my wife is seven months pregnant with a baby we didn't intend. My 15-year-old son has cerebral palsy. I am an extremely overqualified high school chemistry teacher. When I can work, I make $43,700 per year. I have watched all of my colleagues and friends surpass me in every way imaginable, and within 18 months, I will be dead. And you ask why I ran? Walt's perspective was seemingly skewed, given his many accomplishments. He was able to get his PhD, performed groundbreaking research on a project involving photon radiography that was later awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry. He co-founded Grey Matter, a multi-billion dollar company, and has a home and loving family. Although he had a family and intellect, because his life wasn't like that of Elliot or Gretchen, he believed that he was a failure as a chemist as a husband, and as a father. It's safe to say Subcriterion A1 checks out. Subcriterion A2 states that a person with NPD may exhibit a sense of entitlement. Walter's sense of entitlement, or the belief that he is deserving of certain privileges, can be seen when he would ask Mike questions. Where's Jesse? Jesse with me, he's fine. What do you expect me to just believe that? I'm crossing my heart, Walter. Where is he? Hold on. Yo. Mike, where is the laptop? What the hell difference does it make? They got it. End of story. <sighs> APD, Northwest Area Command on second. They tagged it, they filed it. It's in the system, and they locked it in their evidence room. All right. It's evident that Walt believed that he deserved answers from Mike. Walt also felt that he deserved answers from Jesse. For instance, when Jesse turned down Walt's invitation to go cook. Yo, you wanna go shopping? Go do it yourself, all right? I got plans. All right, I'm going to a museum in Santa Fe, not like you need to know. What are you even talking about? Look, man, why am I even explaining myself to you, all right? I, it's, it's not your damn business. It's safe to say Walt meets the requirements of Subcriterion A2. Subcriterion A3 states that people with NPD have little ability to recognize the feelings of others. Walt wasn't exactly able to recognize Skylar's feelings or needs earlier in the series. Like when she clearly wanted space from him after finding out that he manufactured meth for a living and he refused to stay out of the house. He understood that she was upset, but was not able to gauge how upset she actually was. Later, after Jesse killed Gail, Jesse, clearly troubled, tried to reach out to Walter. However, Walt was not able to see the true extent of Jesse's feelings and was more concerned about how Jesse's actions would affect him. How you doing? Good. Yeah? You okay? Is there uh, anything we should talk about? 
Subcriterion A4 states that a person with NPD may have relationships that are superficial and self-serving. One of the most overt examples of Walt's self-serving and superficial behavior was when he spoke to Jesse about telling Andrea that he manufactures drugs. During this conversation, Walt tells Jesse that it was up to him to tell Andrea what he does for a living. Jesse, I can't pretend that this doesn't affect me. It does. But with everything that we've been through, the two of us, this has to be your decision. I mean, you've earned that. Seriously? When Jesse attempted to follow up with Walt concerning his relationship with Andrea, he changes the topic of the conversation, clearly demonstrating that his interest in Jesse's personal life was not genuine or that it did not supersede business. Broke it off with Andrea. I had to. She's gonna tell Brock. You know, I'm still gonna take care of the rent and stuff. It's the right thing to do, but you know. I meant this. How are you feeling about the money? Walter wanted to see if Jesse also felt that Mike was taking liberties that weren't his to take. This was regarding how Mike split their money. Having fulfilled the requirements of Criterion A, we can turn back to Criterion B from the GCPD, which requires a person to display one or more pathological personality traits. The specific pathological personality traits are listed under Criterion B of NPD and APD, respectively. Subcriterion B1 states that a person with NPD would display the pathological personality trait of grandiosity. A person with this trait would regulate their self-esteem by resorting to grandiose strategies of overcompensation. This can be accompanied by feelings of entitlement, self-centeredness, and a belief that one is better than others. Walt overcompensated for selling his share of gray matter by building a meth empire, which should have been named Blue Matter. Walt's feelings of entitlement can be empirically assessed when viewing his interactions with Saul Goodman. Walt expected Jimmy to be compliant with every request he made, including laundering his money, getting him out of trouble when he blew up Walt Jr.'s 2009 Dodge Challenger, and taking the rice from Jesse, which he used Huel to do. A primary example of Walt being condescending and placing himself above another person can be seen when he insulted Jesse's meth by calling it inferior. Yo, what the hell's your problem? All I'm asking is for you to set a meat. Absolutely not. Why? I am not gonna lend my name to an inferior product. I mean, look at the diameters here. Walt also showed arrogance and placed himself above Gail when he stated to Hank that Gail's work looked like low copy of someone else's work and that this genius of his might still be at large. I mean, there was no reasoning, no deductions in those pages. So to my eye, all this brilliance Looks like nothing more than just simple rope copying. This genius of yours. Maybe he's still out there. You can also see his arrogance during his exchange with Skyler when not under the influence of alcohol, when he told Skyler the following. Do you know what would happen if I suddenly decided to stop going into work? A business big enough that it could be listed on the NASDAQ goes belly up. I am not in danger, Skyler. I am the danger. A guy opens his door and gets shot and you think that of me? No. I am the one who knocks. Later in season five, we see how arrogant Walt gets when he tells Saul that although he is letting Mike in their operation, that he's still the person in full control of every aspect of it. Hey, you're okay with that? Yes. He handles the business, and I handle him. Walt's self-centeredness can be seen if we take a second glance at his conversation with Jesse regarding the reason why Victor was killed. Been thinking about Victor. Yeah. Yeah. All this time, I was sure that Gus did what he did to send me a message. Maybe there's another reason. It's obvious Walter thinks that some of Gus's decisions, like killing Victor and recruiting Jesse, were centered around him. In other words, he felt that he was the MVP of the ABQ's drug industry, bitch. 
Subcriterion B2 states that a person with NPD would display attention-seeking behavior or may seek admiration. One of the more notable examples of Walt's attention-seeking behavior is observable during his conversation with Gus when they had dinner together. Leave these ingredients alone don't remind me of anything. I mean, not, not very much at all. But in this precise combination, the smell of this meal instantly, it brings you back to my childhood. Is that possible? Basically, it all takes place in the hippocampus. Neural connections are formed. The senses make the neurons express signals that go right back to the same part of the brain as before, where memory is stored. It's uh, something called relational memory. I'm rusty on my biology. That's very interesting. What was simply trying to fish for compliments, which is one way adults display attention-seeking behavior. Another example of this behavior was when Walt jokingly told Hank that he has half a million in cash in his duffel bag during a time in which Hank was helping Walter move out due to marital problems with Skyler. Half a million in cash. It's fair to say that Walt displayed attention-seeking behavior, which means he also displayed one or more pathological personality traits associated with NPD. Subcriterion A1 states that a person with APD can have self-esteem derived from personal gain, power, or pleasure. An example of this type of behavior being displayed was when Walt was unable to view Jesse's perspective regarding his unwillingness to work with him. Although Walt offered Jesse $1.5 million, Jesse still did not want to work with him, or at least not initially. This was because of how much he had lost up to that point, which takes Walt by surprise. Walt was also unable to see Skylar's perspective regarding the importance of keeping up their lie about where Walt was getting his money from. Speaking of money, some examples of when Walt's self-esteem physically rises due to gaining money can be seen when Jesse and Walt successfully cooked 42 pounds of meth and when Walt showed Holly the money he had earned. And yes, in case you were wondering, I did count meth as monetary gain, because Walter viewed all the product he made as potential revenue. If that example doesn't exactly fit, there was also the time where Walter bought two new cars. Subcriterion A2 states that a person with APD would display an unjustifiably high amount of self-esteem, which would cause development of selfish behavior, and a disguised or undisguised disregard for legal, moral, or cultural restrictions. Walt's self-esteem rose disproportionate to what he had accomplished in the realm of drug trafficking. For instance, Walt was so confident in his ability to produce the finest meth that he had the audacity to ask Tuco to invest in his product the second time they met. 70 grand. What did you say? You like this product, and you want more. Consider it a capital investment. Walt became selfish as time progressed. One of Walt's most selfish acts was letting Jane die to save his own skin. Walter also acted selfishly when he continued to cook even though his cancer was in remission and when he accepted a contract extension from Gus. Walt also started to become more of a hardened criminal as time progressed. He had no problems with murder, destroying property, committing arson, producing large quantities of meth, or tampering with police evidence. We know that ultimately Walt cooked and built his drug empire for himself, and that he believed that he was good at producing meth, which was confirmed for his confession to Skyler. All the things that I did, you need to understand. I have to hear one more time that you did this for the family. I did it for me. I liked it. I was good at it. Some criteria on A3 states that a person with APD would lack concern for the feelings, needs, or suffering of others. 
They would also lack remorse after hurting or mistreating others. Walt's lack of concern for Jesse can be observed when he lied about poisoning Brock. Walt felt no remorse about poisoning Brock or lying to Jesse and viewed it as a means to an end. In fact, Walt's lie caused Jesse to question his own sanity and makes him feel remorseful for almost killing Walt. I don't know what's wrong with me, Mr. White. I, <laughs> I don't know how I could be so stupid. Stop, stop that now, come on. Walt was not concerned with the families that would suffer from the deaths he caused. Walt was responsible for indirectly killing Mike's lawyer and Mike's men, and directly killing Gus, Mike, and Gus's guards. Although one could argue that Mike's death was an act of impulsive aggression, the fact that he immediately resorted to violence because he felt insulted speaks volumes about his lack of empathy. As far as showing concern for his family, he showed very little concern for Skylar's suffering after hearing about how she had a mental breakdown at the car wash. Instead of checking on her after lying to Marie, he goes to the kitchen to eat an apple. The go-to universal food eaten by assholes in almost every movie and TV show in existence. Additionally, Walt's exchange with Skyler made it clear that he was going to keep his kids in their house, regardless of Skyler's objections, or the danger they would be placed in. It was clear that at this point, he was not concerned with Skyler's feelings. He was also willing to throw Hank and Marie under the bus when he made that fake confession video where he lied and stated that Hank was the head of a meth empire and that Walt was working for him. Subcriterion A4 states that a person with APD would lack the capacity for mutually intimate relationships because that person would use exploitation as their principal means of relating to others. Furthermore, people with APD use intimidation to control others. In Walt's case, he has exploited both his co-workers and family. Walter lied to Jesse about the reason he wanted to be partners during his stay at the hospital because he wants to stop him from going after Hank. Lastly, as mentioned earlier, Walt used Jesse to kill Gus, stating that he had to go. Walt intimidated Skyler when he challenged all of her plans to get their children away from him. During this conversation, he made threats of his own and continued to challenge her until she backed down and admitted that she was powerless to stop him. What's the plan? I don't know! This is the best I could come up with, okay? I. I will count every minute that the kids are away from here, away from you, as a victory. But you're right. It's a bad plan. I don't have any of your magic, Walt. I don't know what to do. I'm a coward. Walt also intimidated Saul to keep him as his lawyer. Now that Walt has met the requirements for Criterion A for both NPD and APD, as well as Criterion B for NPD, we can now move on to the seven pathological personality traits that are a part of Criterion B for APD, and finish covering the rest of the GCPD in the next video. Feel free to click on the video on screen to continue to part two.